Hi Mark Savage here and welcome to me on the floor. Now I wasn't going to show you a video of me changing exhaust because it ain't hard is it? Bucket out, that's three bolts, two head bolts out, remember they're 10 mil WD or maintenance spray and then two bolts at the side here, again nothing major and off comes this exhaust. What was odd though is when I took this off, um, this was this is an original heavyweight exhaust and remember if you change this you shouldn't necessarily need to up jet because this is a water cooled version but listen to this that's not right Can you check out? no sorry that's not right and that most certainly wouldn't have been good um, yeah so this is knackered and I don't think you have this exhaust in that long um, yeah yeah let's not do that anyway um, so I've got a nice Technigas sports exhaust to go on here. I'll just uh, show you this. I mean, this weighs a couple of kilos compared to about six kilos, you know. Um, very nice. I blow it over already, so this is ready to go in there. They did block off the uh, gas recirculation valve, which is um, just a stupid thing, really. Anyway, that's there. Um, and here's a little triangle, we're going to get that, we're just going to blow that over and that will go on the two bolts and this will connect to it and that will be on there. Uh, spark plug clean and then we're going to get to the carburetor which I'm hoping um, will obviously be the E10 damage that I think it's going to be. So drain out, clean the carburetor, check any parts that are damaged, may have to renew the jets, I don't know, I have a pack of jets so we'll be able to do that as well but I'm just going to blow this over black and make it look quite nice which it should do um, compared to the bike is really really in damn good condition so let's get some spray on this and you join me when that's all back on again and we're having a look at carburetor this is part two of it anyway because you had a look over and yes you know it's a couple of gallon tank and 13 inch wheels and the usual sort of stuff but one owner Andy. Yeah. So there we have one sports exhaust. I think it looks quite nice. A lot better than the other thing that's rattling around. And we're now just starting on the carburetor. And if you can see, that is pretty yellowy dirty. Um, when I drained out the fuel, I've left it here because it's, it's a water one, and I can drain it out. When I drained this out, this was really sticky yellow. The fuel did have little bits in it. I mean, that's all it takes, you know, is a um, tiny little bit sitting in the bottom, sucking up in the jet. You just don't know. So I'm going to drain all of the fuel out anyway. Clean these little jets out. Can you see? Can you see the whiting on it? So can you see all the, the whiting on this? It's not good. That, I believe, is E10. Good job I got that one there, isn't it? So can you see on there about it falling on the floor? It's not clever. Looks like aluminium rust on there. I know it's not. But it wipes off. We're going to blow all these through. I'm going to blow all these through with a nice bit of carburetor cleaner. Put it all back on again. Drain the fuel out. Put the fresh fuel in. Siphon it back through. Clean all this up. And then see what she does. So come back to me in a minute. And we'll see. I've still got the front shot to do. I've still got the master and brakes to do, but I just want to see if I can get this running and revving up. I could up jet it. I'm actually going to take off this link pipe, okay, because this is often a restrictor. Don't need it on. Because the sports exhaust, more air in, more air out. Um, wash the filter as well. Show people do that. Wash some liquid, make sure it's dry, and put it back in again. Just after I cleaned this little jet, I thought I'd have a look at the numbers stamped on the side because we've all got numbers stamped on these. My eyes aren't what they used to be, so I went to the wife and she came up with a clever idea of using the zoom on the phone. It's a 50. It had been down jetted. These are standard 54, 56 standard. Either one. I've seen both in loads of them. Not 50. That's really, 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 really small. And would have been causing it to smother and not enough. Just not good enough, no. So unfortunately for me, I've only got two other jets. 80, 76, much bigger than I'd like. 
I normally go 60, 62, but I've only got a 76, that's all I can use. So more fuel, side pipe off, more air, sports exhaust, more air out. We shall see what it does. If it doesn't run right, then I most certainly will be putting a 62 back in there. I'm going to buy a couple. So where we are now is I don't know whether it was the tiny jet and it got blocked, whether it's E10 petrol and it sort of just didn't run right, a bit gooey, a bit whatever it is, or the ethanol in there, I don't know. But I'm going to try a 76, draining out the petrol as we speak now, and I'm going to see if it starts with a 76 jet in it, which is a bit big, I must admit. But we'll see, then you can get on with other things. So a little bit of messing around. Ugh. And putting some good old fresh fuel in there. Now got. Don't sound too bad. Revs up. Now, if you watch a couple of my videos when I've opened them up before and you hear that, uh, it's not got that. So we know where we're going next, don't we? Variator. So this is running on a 50 jet. I can't confirm or deny whether it's the E10 fuel or not with a 50 jet. I just can't do that. And there was a bit of crap in the bottom bowl of the carburetor as well. Um, I spoke to quite an expert in the field today. And although we would both agree and disagree that E10 fuel isn't brilliant with carburetors, it's been using the continent for a very long time. They've not got the same climate as us, but we both agree E10 fuel left in your carburetor and in your petrol tank for any length of time will damage it. Okay, it will just destroy it, it will damage bits and bobs. So if you're going to have a ped and you're going to store it up, at any length of time, I'm talking, it goes off as well, E10 petrol goes off quite quickly. So we must be talking, you know, if you're going to start for a month, drain all of the fuel out and the carburetor. It's the best thing I can say you can do. He still says that you could run it, it may not be brilliant, and it will suck a bit of water in, but you should get over it. Uh, but definitely E10 is not great. And there's a proof in the pudding. Smaller jet, dirt in there, change the fuel, better sports exhaust, and this baby's running. So we're going to do the variator quickly now, and then I'm going to sort the front brake and the suspension out. So remember, carburetor cleaner. Remember, I said this time and time again. You know, take this off. Um, nice clean rag. So you can see there's some dirt on here. Just... So using my uh, scales. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Eight grams is eight grams. You know I say use six. And dirty, but look, the middle bit is jammed. That's got to freely, look at it. That's got to be cleaned and freely go through. So what I found so far, I found that they de-jetted it to 50 and not the 56 it should have been. So now it's 76, that's a bit bigger than I want. However, starts. Um, exhaust, whether the baffle had gone inside, but that was clanging around. That's not good either. Fuel, definite problem there, I don't care what you say. Definite problem, not happy with that anyway. Shaft, not going through properly and jamming. Not as dirty as it could have been in here, to be honest with you. Um, I just said someone's been here recently. Although the rollers are round, which is always good, but you know, still dirty. And eight gram rollers. You know, I'm not, yeah, I'm not happy with eight gram rollers. I've always said 36 maximum um, should be running there. Now, it is a 50cc water cool, so I'm going to see, we'll put this back together. I think I'll probably order some six gram rollers, see how it runs, because I know that this has the power because it's water cooled to push it, you know. I've got seven grams before. All these are running just about eight and under. So they've lost a little bit, but they're round, but they look like they were shiny, like as in like a grease on them. Um, so I wasn't particularly happy with that. I don't think I was put grease. I've heard before people spraying 
WD-40 in there. No, no, no. Clean and dry, okay? Clean and dry. Now let's see if this goes through. There you go. All right, that's what it should be. That should just slip straight through. Meaning it goes back and forth. Perfect. Let's get this all clean, back together again. I thought I need to go out for a ride. No, <laughs> I I need to fix the brake and suspension first. I'm getting carried away with myself. But anyway, happy, happy, happy. And he did say to me that he had a brand new shock on the front and back. Brand new, I'm not sure how long brand new, but that looks really good, doesn't it? But that's a speed fight front single arm shock. Um, you can see that that's not for a speed fight. And it hasn't got the same spring mechanism. Although this might be new, I don't actually think this was for a speed fight. Because the torque on this one is completely different. And you can see it's bigger. And I've changed many of these. So I, I think this might be like a, a twin back one, you know? But it isn't capable of holding the front of this. So I'm going to put this one on, which works. And I'll do the same bounce test and see what it does. And that'll just prove where this may be new. But it isn't for a speed fight. Might be for a rear twin sim or, you know, one of them sort of cheap ones. Worth keeping though, but not for a speed fight. So, to give a fair test, pop up stand. So if you watch my other video, I was able to, I was able to jump up and down on the floor. That's not doing it anymore, is it? The back compression is beautiful. I've upgraded the back shock as well, so now it's a lot, lot stiffer. And the front, look at that. You're not getting the same, and I'm doing it the same. <laughs> I'm not doing uh, no silly business there. So now, front shock done. Rear shock upgraded. It's just a grind a bit on there, so a bit more weight on the back now. The fella Andy was quite a light fella. Um, I'm 14 and a half stone, so I don't know who's going to be riding it. But I like it a lot stiffer at the back. Don't sound right, no, I know, don't make any comments. Um, very out of clean, look like some of the WD did it, I've cleaned all that up. Eight grams, I think it's quite heavy, I wanna see what it pulls like. Um, knowing that 50 cc engine's got a little bit more torque on it, it may be okay for it, we'll have to see. Um, Kevlar belt in there, I've cleaned all the WD that was around in places, I think someone sprayed the mechanism up. Now I'm not moaning at the garage, please don't think I am, because a lot of garages moan about other garages. Um, but that shock, Maybe new, but not for this bike. They'd also closed in the actual pin bit that holds it in. Um, so I couldn't get that one in. And when I put it back on the other bike I took it off of, um, it was wiggling like a bitch. So it is not rated for a single arm front suspension. That's my professional view. This one is now. And this should ride so much better. Um, start to everything else. Front brake. Let's look at the mass cylinder. Change the pads. See where we are with that. Pads are brand new. Um, good to see. I just want to say, and there's no other way of saying this without me sounding like a bit of a. Please don't underestimate um, knowledge, skill, um, charm um, for finding things. You know, um, put this bike into a garage, and you'd pay a hefty sum. And it was quite quite a lot of money for the Marsunda. Uh, rebuild etc etc you know and we could be talking something as simple as E10 fuel um, de-jetted it it did say that the car went wrong and they hashed up another carburetor you know major problem the exhaust you know me finding these things I've done it again and again and again and that's what all these videos are supposed to help you to do not just to email me saying Mark I've watched one of your videos and what the hell is it uh, expecting answers. I've done that. I've done that when you've done bugger all. There's 120 videos, must be more than that. 300 on peds. Watch them. Okay, they're there to help you diagnose what could be wrong with your ped. And if you can't do it, haven't got the tools, then you've got a couple of options. Just put it into a garage, sell it. All right, they're, they're your simple options. Um, I'm not, you know, I've now got to look up here, but I had to check this first. And getting this off can be a bugger. Um, but I know you've got to take the wheel off. I know what size spanner you've got to look for. The suspension I knew there was something wrong there. Do you know, that would have failed the MOT. Um, and if it didn't, because it's new, it most certainly would have been horrible riding it. Well, my professional view. Right, I'm going to put all this back together because I'm not actually going to leave this off because I've got to bleed it and then see if I can push it through. So, 
all the top's got to come off now. This has got to come off to get to the master cylinder. On this ped, being a 2007, um, it's got twin back and front um, disc brakes, which was the newer feature. Early ones have got drum back, okay? And if you're ever wondering why it feels more spongy, it's because it's a drum and it's expected of that. You know, you're not going to get the same braking power. These ones, you really hang on the back and you'll skid the back. The other ones have to wind them up and you get an oval bit sometimes on them because of the age of these. But again, this is immaculate. So I'm now going to take this off. Have a look what's wrong with that, bleed the brakes through, hopefully, you know, I have got some bit on there, so I'm going to see where we're going to stand with that. Right. So, what's actually wrong with this brake? Remember when you're bleeding brakes, make sure you put, fill it and put this back on, do a couple of three and then fill it back up again. You do not want to run this dry. But what's wrong with this? It isn't the master cylinder. It's whoever changed the front pads either bled the front brake and messed it up. So all it is, they needed to just take the old pads out or while the old pads are in there, get a pushback tool or with these just so small, two screwdrivers and you just lever them or big fat one and you've got to put a bit of twist to it, push the lever back, okay? So all you've got to do, push it back. There should be enough room in there for it to push back and then you put the new pads in, squeeze, 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 perfect. They didn't do this with this. I don't know if they split the caliper, I don't know if they drained a bit out, because that's a cheating way, whatever. But that's what this is about. That's why this one feels beautiful. Remember this is disc back and front. And this actually feels like a rear brake. This feels like a drum does, where you can literally pull it all the way in. It slowly stops, might just about pass an MOT, but not a savage MOT. I don't like it, I'm gonna get that working properly. Once that's done, we're looking good. There's always bits you don't see me do. Bike runs, starts, brake is excellent. Um, but the little micro switch, yeah. Um, you really have to pull it hard to uh, get it to do it. Now, unlike the um, Aprilia, these ones can go apart. Two bits of copper in there. Where I think it was pulling in so much before that it worked, now it's a good half inch you know, more out because it won't go back anymore. This just isn't lighting up. You really have to pull it in hard, which could be an MOT failure. So, you know, there's just so many little bits. I try and show you just a broad spectrum of what I'm doing. Sometimes I can't show you all the little bits, you know, because the videos, if you look at early videos, they went on for like 40 minutes. And that was after cutting stuff out. And now I'm watching blabbing on the 40 minutes. I'm just, again, I'm back to the front wheel bit. Don't think that these go all well, you know, I still miss tiny little things that, you know, I don't show you because you'd be bored shitless. I've been here seven hours working on this, seven hours from start to finish, the exhaust, getting the other exhaust off, etc. Um, you don't see it all. Now, look at that, perfectly now. One, two. See, just a little bit of WD on there. But it would have been annoyed, it would have annoyed me, you know. I don't want, <laughs> I don't want to uh, change the seat. This is such an immaculate bike, let down ever so slightly by three little tears in the seat. Um, and I don't want to change it because it's all original. So I'm going to leave it. I am taking the decision to leave it. And if you stay with me when I get this back on, uh, there's five. Do you know, this has actually been a real pleasure. I sound like Wheeler Deal or something, I don't know. It's been a real pleasure to work on a bike that has not been molested by 10 other owners, you know. Some of these little bikes at this age can have one a year, one a year, you know. This is 13 years old. I've seen some of these with 13 owners, you know. And it always shocks me when you get people go, how, it's had 10 owners? Well, these are 50 cc's, and generally, these are owned by 16 year olds, the first actual bike, you know, and all I want to do is ride it for the year, out it and get a bigger bike. There's five screws that hold this on. Nine times out of ten, there's only four, if you're lucky. The f all the works and stuff, there's always bolts missing, always, and it's been so nice to find them all on there. Even the exhaust shield was underneath the seat. Haven't seen my name in a long time. 
a long, long time. So that's what you get when you get a pretty decent bike. I'm going to leave it this way. I'm going to wash it, clean it up, and you're going to see next outside, um, running, doing what it should do, um, looking pristine like it should have been. Like it might have been at the factory. But look at that. That is... Oh, that's good. It doesn't touch the throttle anymore. Sit down. <laughs> That's my son just gone out on that one. <laughs> Bloody hell, I wasn't expecting that. 35, hit 40 up the hill, coming down 40, 45, and it kept going. That I'm well happy with. Watch it come back. Citizen on patrol. <laughs> She's waiting for him. I can hear it. So I'm going to give this a 10 out of 10 for acceleration up and down the hill. Sam? Yeah, it's pokey. I like that. <laughs> it's fun, I want it. That really went really well. I wasn't expecting it. No, this has got eight nice. grand rollers, had a 50 jet, now got a 76 jet in it. Got a race exhaust on there, all the bits done, and that was, well, I topped well over 45 down here and had to let off. I know what speed you thought you were doing. I didn't even know. No, it was too much smell factor. Yeah. Right. Job done. Thank you so much. Please like, share, and subscribe. Got a thumbs up from both of us. What more would you want? <laughs> Check out other videos. Bye bye. I like that a lot.